<clears throat> Hi folks, this is uh, Jason Burns and I uh, hope you're okay today. Uh, we're going to be looking at, i just pour some water. We're going to be looking at at um, a topic that I think is really important and uh, I just wanna this is not a deep study or anything it's just a I just wanna heighten your awareness about the subject that's all I don't want you to go over the top I don't want you to think that I'm over the top but I'm sharing this as a shepherd as someone who wants to protect you from the wolves as you can see the sheep there the wolf behind and there are a lot of wolves out there who are trying to take away your faith trying to dampen your faith and um, I just want to make you aware of the apostasy that's taking place within the Christian church um, I'm not going to get in people who talk a lot about this they go on a lot about this and I think they're over the top you can be so cynical and you can be so judgmental of other Christians and I don't agree with that I believe that if someone believes in Jesus Christ and they love the Lord and they love the Word of God and and they they know Jesus then if they're from a different denomination a different grouping that from me then I, I give them the right hand of fellowship so I'm not into uh, judging Christians and pushing all Christian denominations down and pushing Christians aside and saying I'm the only one and all the rest. I'm not into that and I don't want you to be because that's unbalanced. That's just really unbalanced. What I want to share with you is I'm just genuinely concerned that things are not what we think they are and I just hope that you felt the same that this would just encourage you uh, to just keep going and not to give up okay okay uh, I'm going to pray uh, like I said this is not a, a deep study or anything um, it's just some thoughts uh, that's all I'm going to be doing more sermons later on and Bible studies uh, but this is just an important thing that needs to be said and I just hope it's a blessing to you alright uh, feel free to mirror this video I think this is a very important video and if you want to mirror the video uh, feel free to use it okay Father God I just thank you for your love <clears throat> and your grace and your care and Father I just pray as I read your word and as I share my thoughts that you will bless and so God I just pray that whatever I say now would be acceptable to you it would be for your glory it would bring you honor and it would be a blessing to your people and so father forgive me for my foolish ways forgive me for the corruption of my own heart but Lord I pray that you will forgive me and help me and that you are blessed today in your name Lord Jesus Christ and for your glory Amen okay um, Right, I, what I'd like you to do is to turn to the, the book of Malachi. Um, so if you go to the book of Malachi, and let's just read the first chapter. It says, The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, said the Lord, yet you have, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord? But I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom said, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. And thus says the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord of indignation for ever. And your eyes shall see, and you shall say, The Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. 
A son honoureth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honour? If I be a master, where is my fear? Says the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests that despise my name. And you say, Wherein have we despised thy name? You offer polluted bread upon my altar, and you, you in that you say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto the governor, will he be pleased with thee? Or accept thy person, said the Lord of hosts. Now I pray you, beseech God, that he will be gracious unto you, that he had been by you this, sorry, unto us, that this hath been by your means. Will he regard your person, saith the Lord of hosts? Who is there, even among you, that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do you kindle fire on my altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, neither will I accept an offering at your hand. For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles sense shall be offered unto my name and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen says the Lord of hosts for you have profaned it and that you say the table of the Lord is polluted and the fruit thereof even his meat is contentable you said also behold what a weariness it is and you have snuffed it said the Lord of hosts and you brought that which was torn and lame, and the sick that you brought an offering, should, a, should I accept this of your hand, says the Lord? For cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male, and voweth and sacrifice unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. If you read the book of Malachi, If you read the book of Malachi, God is really angry with his people because they're just, they're not giving him the best. They're not like, they should have brought the best animals to sacrifice, but they brought the things that were not worth much to be sacrificed. So they were an offense to God. And I think in the church in the West, the church has become an offense to God. The church is beginning to stink before God. It says, the love of many are wax cold. And God has seen the lack of love within the church. He's seen that the church in the West has become materialistic. The church in the West, generally speaking, there are churches that, that people have, have set up that have come from uh, immigrants uh, like Iranian churches and things like that. And these are, are being blessed of God and there are that are being blessed but on a whole the church in the West is not giving the best to God it's departing from God even the God's people are not honoring God as much you can see that in the preaching of the word the fact that preaching is not made center in many pulpits today is an indication that people don't respect the word of God like they used to. Um, and so in Malachi, God is angry with the church. He's angry with the people. And God is angry with the church in the West because the church in the West doesn't see God as great, doesn't want to give him the glory. I'm not going to go into I'm not going to point out all the failures and faults of the church but I'm telling you that God is angry with the church in the West and you can see that in that the church is not being blessed as it should be okay there are churches that are growing there are some churches but they're few in number compared to the bigger picture of the church of the big denominations and for example I'll just highlight one example the major denominations are allowing um, gay 
civil rights within the church. So for example we have the Archbishop of Canterbury say that he, he, he basically agrees with gay marriage. Now for a church leader of the Anglican Communion to say that and for that church leader to not be told to leave the church is an indictment on the church, it's an indictment on God's people not only in that denomination but in the wider denominations and beyond. It's simply not acceptable for the leader of Christ Church, a leader of Christ Church, to be teaching things that are diametrically opposed to the Word of God. But the fact that many in the church don't say anything, the fact that many in the church accept what uh, and come under the leadership of the arch, Archbishop indicates there is something seriously wrong within the people of God's mindset. Basically we're not concerned for the glory and honor of God, we're not concerned for the purity of the church, we're not concerned for following the Bible. And so apostasy is here. Um, and apostasy is judgment of God on the disobedience of God's people and as they disobey he leaves them to the wolves. Uh, I know the arch, I'm going to say I'm picking on this guy not because I'm picking on him um, because I could talk about many other church leaders, many other church denominations, I'm just using this as an example and I know that you're, you're finding this shocking, that you, you're shocked by what I'm saying. I understand that. I don't want to be negative. But we have to face the facts. The fact is that we have the Archbishop of Canterbury and he's happy with gay marriage and he would bring it in, but he can't bring it in because it would bring division within the anger. But that's absolutely horrendous. He, he, he should be faithful to scripture and scripture does not teach gay marriage. It doesn't teach anything pro-gay. There's nothing pro-gay in the Bible apart from that the gospel of grace is offered to all people whether they're gay, whether they're not gay, whether they're black, white, whatever race, whatever person you are, the gospel of God's love comes to you and God says that he, he died for you and you're willing and he's willing and he wants you to be saved. So the love of God is there for every gay person in the gospel. But as a lifestyle, the Bible is not pro-gay lifestyle at all. So for the art